So there are going to be times when you've got a function that is it's really hard to um, determine the change in the y value of the function, maybe how the function is defined, or, or you know for some computational reasons. So sometimes what we do is we say that um, let's say we've got a function. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw one out for you. And let's say it looks something like this. I'm going to call it um, call it f of x. So this will be the x-axis. This is our f of x-axis or our y-axis. And so let's say we've got a starting point here. And I'm just going to call it, let's say, a. And so then since this function gives me the the output values, this is going for the input values, this is going to be f at a. Okay, so the function evaluated at the at the value a. Okay, now what we're going to do is let's say we wanted to know, we took another point somewhere over here. And let's just call this this is a random point. I'm just going to call this an arbitrary x. Okay. And so it's at a height of f of x. Well, we might want to know how much, and I'm going to draw this, I'll draw this in right here. We might want to know as we go from a to x, let's just call that delta x. We might want to know how much the actual function changes. Okay, and the actual function change, let's call that delta y, and that is clearly equal to f at x minus f at a. Or another way of looking at that is that is f at, now x, you notice if I take a and I add the distance delta x to it, I get this guy. So x is equal to a plus delta x. Okay, and that's how we defined our change in our y. Now, to find delta y, so we may we may ask um, what is the change in the y variable? Well, we might not actually be able to compute it, or it might be you know somewhat difficult to, to find it. So here's what we're going to do: we're going to take the tangent line at a, which looks something like that, and we're going to use the tangent line to estimate this this change right here. So you can see that the tangent line is only off from the function here just a little bit. Okay, in fact if I blow that up over here on the side, what we have is a situation where we've got the green line, which is the tangent line. Okay, close enough. And then over here at the yellow point Okay, here's the yellow point, here's the green line, and the distance between the yellow point and the green line is fairly small. In fact, if you look over here, it's, it's a really small, small value. Well, the green line can be used to approximate a linear, because it's a line, it can be used to approximate delta y. So how are we going to do that? Well we can find the equation for this green line. So here's what we know. First we have to know that the original function f is differentiable at point a. So that's that's got to be one of the things that we that we need to have. So we need to know that f prime at a exists. Now if f prime at a exists, I can find the equation this tangent line. So let's just call that L for the linear Okay, linear approximation. And so what that's going to be is L as a function of x, a function of this this x right here, um, is going to be equal to, so now so that's this guy right here. So any any point
point on this line will have the coordinates x comma now. The question is, what's the other point? Okay, which or what's the other coordinate right here? So to figure that out, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the slope of the line. I'm going to use this l of x minus. So I'm going to use this form right here. Y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So l of x is my y minus y1. So I have a point on here, a f of a, is equal to the m value. The slope value of this line is f prime at a. And we know it exists because we're assuming differentiability times x. The, whatever the x value is, minus x1, which here is a. So if I go ahead and I move this term around, I've solved for my y value, I get this, f at a plus f prime at a times x minus a. And this is delta x, right? Because x, x minus a. If x is equal to a plus delta x, if x is equal to a plus delta x, then x minus a is equal to a plus delta x minus a, which is just equal to delta x. So this guy right here is delta x. So you may you may see it written like this. The equation, the y value for for this guy right here is given by l of x, which is equal to f at a plus f prime at a times delta x. So this f at a plus f prime at a delta x is the y value. If I plug in x here, that's what I get out over here. Now, delta y Delta y is this, this length right here. This is delta y. Delta x, or excuse me, this length right here is the approximation. So this little rise right here, okay, this little bit of rise is given by this guy minus this guy. So I'm going to call this little rise, this green thing, I'm going to call it something else. I'm going to call it small dy. We'll just call it dy or the differential of y. So I'm going to say this, dy, the amount of change that the linear approximation gives is equal to this guy minus this guy, which is f prime at a times delta x. So what is this saying? OK, so big picture here. What it's saying is that dy, dy is the approximate change in the actual f of x. So basically, it is dy is approximately equal to, it's about equal to delta y. So dy, which is equal to this guy right here, is approximately equal to the change in y. So let's say you've got a function you want to estimate its change. Well, you can do it directly, but sometimes that's really difficult to do. So what we can do is we can estimate the change in the function by using the tangent line close to our initial point where we're going to take the derivative. So what I'm going to do is... Um, we're going to use this idea right here, and I'm going to show you how it's used um, in um, a couple of examples. So we'll, we'll work on this, this linear approximation.